started to take a articulated fish spine this is a 15 millimeter and you're gonna go ahead and put that in the vise this is what we're making the tail for this fly on so there's a whole lot of ways you can change what this fly looks like I'm just gonna show you the very very basic one um, so we're just gonna put down a layer of thread here and cut off the tag now we're using this is 100 GSP I just like using this stuff because it never breaks um, we're gonna throw down some ultra chenille this is micro and worm green this is gonna be kinda like a little hot spot and if you look at a lot of conventional anglers what they're throwing uh, a lot of them have that sort of hot spot tail to it so this is basically just a way to do the same thing it's not like a bright green this is just a worm green so I like it. It gives it a pretty good natural look, but still that color change. We'll throw down a little bit of gel super glue, and I just like putting a couple wraps because that kind of spreads it out some. And if I can cover up some of that, and take the thread to the eye of the shank, we're just going to go ahead and wrap around this ultra chenille. Once you've wrapped it, I go back a little bit farther just because I like it to be have a bit of a taper. And you're allowed to do this. I never thought you know you could wrap over what you've already wrapped, but we'll keep going. And again, if you wanted to change it, you know you could put foam in the tail that would cause it to float. You could do a marabou tuft tail that would give it this sort of different little action to it. Um, you see some carp flies that have that sort of thing on it. Um, but this is just going to be your basic, basic fly pattern um, doing with this bass worm. Uh, and we'll go ahead and whip finish that. Again, you can do that in whatever color you want, but this is going to be a worm green and kind of a brown green variation. So we're going to cut off that, put down a little bit more super glue, and then we will set that aside for the next part. So this is just zap a cap. Nothing too fancy about this glue. Um, just cover the thread base as best as we can. We're actually going to cover that up with the next wraps of chenille that we do too, which you will see in a moment. So next up we have our jig hook. And I've been using the Umqua uh, 60 degree jig hooks and I do like those a lot, the X series. I've tried a couple other brands and I've had a bunch of problems with them pulling out, which is very, very annoying. You know, you get hung up on one thing and then all of a sudden it just bends out. So these hooks, I've not had that problem and that is why I use them. Cut the tag. And what's kind of unique about this is we're going to almost make this like uh, a little Ned rig style or something, if you will. We're going to take these eyes, these are large to lead eye from hairline and we're going to tie it right on the bend so it's going to put all of the weight of this pattern right at the head of this all right so we've got those on there got our glue laid down and now we're going to put on the tail and the reason why I like this on a jig shank hook is because it gives the possibility for this thing to sit basically on its eyes shooting straight up. It doesn't always do that like you'll see at the end of the video when I show you a little bit of underwater footage. But I'm going to grab some 1x tippet. This is old stuff from last year that I just keep and I don't like using it if it's over a year old. pulled off probably like eight-ish inches and then just thread what the tail is onto it and then we're going to pull that off as long as you want the fly to be. So you know your typical smallmouth size flies are going to be like three to four inches. Yes they will just nip the butt of this thing. Yes you could tie a second hook back there and use that 
So there's a lot of possibilities. Again, this is the simple way to tie this. So we've just doubled over the tippet and we're going to tie that down. And again, this is 100 GSP thread, so it's super strong. I'll just hold those up and cut them off. And cover them up with some thread. So it's really simple. We've just created this super long tail uh, with the 1x tippet. It's probably coming off, you know, maybe three ish inches, three and a half inches is what the total length of the fly is going to be. And then this is the rest of the ingredients just this variegated chenille. This is a medium. We sell it, we have it in every color that they make uh, from Wapsie. So it, it's going to, you can have a lot of variety with what you want this thing to look like. But I also tie it in a little bit weird. So I do just like it's a normal woolly bugger, but then I hold it back, wrap over it again, because I like the base of this thing to be thicker. So towards the eyes, I like that to be a thicker body. And so an easy way to start that off right is by doing what we just did. Then you're literally just going to wrap this up from the eye to the back. Right here's maybe the only tricky part with this fly. With your left hand, you're going to grab the back half of that thing. Right hand, you're going to twist the chenille around the tippet. So this is why when I cut off the chenille, I cut off like two and a half feet. I mean, it's I don't like running out. It's very annoying. <laughs> but keep winding up. All right, so now we're at the back half where our little green hotspot is, and I'm actually going to wrap this stuff over it where I tied it in. And that little bit of glue will hold it in place. You could make this be like a seamless connection if you wanted to, but I'm just going to wrap straight back down so it, it'll have a little bump there. Now I'm going to take it around the dumbbell eyes just to give it a good clean finish. And this is not an original to us pattern. There are other people that have made this. This is just like, like a gully's worm. Fulling mill sells them. So I'm not saying that I created this, but I am saying that I have used this a bunch and I like it. I haven't seen people use these things very commonly because you know there are some, some complications that can arise with the tail getting stuck with the hook but uh, it's a really cool concept and if somebody's out there fishing with a Ned rig or if they're fishing with like one of those Yamato wacky rigs all those soft plastic stuff this thing is kind of like one of the answers to that um, and I'll show you guys in a second some of the underwater footage and it doesn't act exactly like you may expect um, it does just kind of lay backwards but that's it I mean it's a really simple fly So I've just set this thing in the test tank, it's been sitting in there a while, and you can see it doesn't act quite like a Ned rig like this where it's going to sit straight up on its end. Um, this would just be no current, that's what it's going to look like. This long snake, basically just like a soft plastic. And here it is in current. So it just kind of moves around. You will see it kind of goes up on its end a little bit. But it's a really cool fly. And this is the most basic way to make it.